Managing your Zoom meeting using the Zoom host menus. You can bring up these menus uh, if you don't see them at the bottom of the screen, as we do right now, by just mousing over the video window, and they should pop up. Here we see a series of icons labeled with their functions that allow you to control your Zoom meeting. Uh, we'll start on the left and move across. Uh, perhaps most commonly used is the mute button. This allows you to turn off your microphone so that no one can hear you. Uh, clicking it once, we'll put a red slash through it, and now you're muted. Clicking again will unmute. Also next to the microphone icon is a, an audio settings menu, as indicated by this little up caret here. If you click on that, you can select uh, microphone, the microphone to use. If you have more than one attached to your computer, you can also select the output device, the speakers that you wish to use with your meeting. You can test these speakers and microphones here. Check, 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 check. And that's all there is to checking that out. Uh, you can switch to audio by phone if you need to, or leave computer audio. And there are audio settings uh, where you can uh, adjust your output level. Uh, if you don't have automatically adjust volume set, you can also uh, adjust your microphone sensitivity, though this generally works pretty well. Uh, of these options here, you can mute your microphone automatically when joining a meeting, just in case, in case you don't trust yourself as to what you might say. Um, or you can automatically join audio by computer without and not have to do that every time. Um, perhaps the most useful setting here is this one uh, that allows you to use your space bar like the push to talk button on a walkie talkie. So if you're muted, you can unmute yourself just by pressing the space bar speak for a minute and then let it up and uh, you'll be muted again. Uh, let's see, under advanced, uh, you have these audio processing options. Uh, probably best generally to leave these on audio, on auto, unless you're uh, an audio geek. This button, uh, the little camera icon in the menu, will allow you to turn your video on and off. If you turn your video off and you've uploaded a profile image to your Zoom account, that will appear. Otherwise, your name will appear there. And you can, that's a toggle, just like the microphone mute button. So you can turn your video on and off at will. There's also, of course, a video settings menu there as well, the little up carrot. Uh, it allows you to select the camera that you wish to use if you have multiple cameras attached to your computer. Indeed, um, Zoom can handle several different cameras, but it can only use one at a time. But it, that will allow you to switch from camera to camera at will. Uh, the other option here, of course, uh, is to choose your virtual background if you so desire, and if your computer has enough processing power to do that. We'll just take a look at that screen for a moment. Um, this works best if you have a green screen or at least some um, consistently colored background, a, a monochrome background behind you. A, a featureless light colored wall works almost as well as a green screen, though without the green screen, you require more processing power and memory in your computer. To select a virtual background, all you have to do is choose one of the images or one of the little videos that is supplied with Zoom, or you can load your own by using this plus button here. You can add images and videos, and most uh, common video types, uh, certainly MPEG-4 will work fine, and most common image types will work as well. You may just have to try that to see if the image you have will work. Uh, there's not a whole lot more to say about that, really. Uh, 
the next icon is quite important uh, if your meeting should be crashed by a zoom bomber or someone trying to be disruptive uh, this allows you to uh, secure the meeting without having to go and work your way through some of the other menus a relatively recently added icon if you click on that icon you see that you can lock your meeting so that no one else can uh, can attend you, and you can enable your waiting room so that people who are coming into the meeting go into an inactive vestibule as it were uh, for your meeting and you have to let them in uh, in order to for them to participate in the meeting also you can uh, choose a number of capabilities that you can grant or not grant to your attendees. You can allow them to share their screens or not. To turn one of these off, just click on it and then click the security icon again. You'll see that it's been turned off. You can prevent the, your attendees from using the chat tool if someone is misbehaving in there. You can prevent them from renaming themselves something nasty <laughs> and having that show up in your meeting. And you can prevent them from unmuting themselves if you uncheck this so that if you mute someone they can't uh, speak again until you allow them to and as a last resort you can also remove any participant in your meeting just by clicking here and all participants other than you the host will show here and you can remove them quickly once you remove them they can't re-enter this meeting and you can also report someone for being disruptive. So those security tools make it much easier and quicker to deal with uh, any sort of disruption in your meeting. To see who's in your meeting, you can click on the participants tool and that uh, will show both you and all of your attendees. I have one attendee other than me. Actually, it's my phone <laughs> sitting over here. Um, it, right now that is muted I can ask the person to unmute themselves I can't unmute them but I can ask them to unmute themselves and I can chat with them I can stop their video I can make them a host the host or a co-host I can rename them I can throw them back into the waiting room I can remove them from the course or I can report them here as well uh, the participant tool will tell you something about who's doing what uh, you can see here that i'm speaking because my little microphone is uh, bouncing up and down you can see that i'm sharing my video um, if uh, i were sharing my screen you'd also be able to see that here so if someone is sharing their screen inappropriately you can come in here and find out who it is very quickly uh, here you can also mute everyone very quickly uh, should that be necessary everyone but yourself all attendees you just click this button and then uh, you by clicking yes you will mute everyone in the meeting this is a quick way to get rid of background noise in a meeting and you can uh, also allow your participants to unmute themselves or not as is appropriate at the at the time I'm just going to not do that right now so that's the participants tool uh, polling we have another uh, video that shows how to do polling but it's basically it just allows you to have uh, people answer a question and tabulate their answers so that everyone can see so it's a, a way to uh, poll the opinions and knowledge of your audience uh, the chat tool is one of the most important tools in the zoom menus this is a simple text chat like the old IRC chat um, you can send to everyone or to individual attendees if the host has allowed that you can always do that other participants can uh, do that or not as you've allowed uh, to put a chat message into the chat tool all you have to do is type on the line that says type message here 
and then press enter or return on the keyboard depending on the type of computer and then everyone or the person to whom you've sent the message will see a text message um, you can also share files that way and uh, if, by going to the little uh, more menu here in the lower right hand corner you or your attendees can save the chat log to refer back to later you can also set uh, participant uh, properties here. And you can merge this to the meeting window and keep it open if you like. I'm just going to close that. Uh, ready? If you save the chat log, it will go to... the uh, to your trying to get to my there we go it will go to your hard drive your to your documents folder your default documents folder to a folder called zoom and then be found in a subfolder which is dated and timed to identify it and the chat log will be saved as meeting saved chat.txt in that folder. Not much there right now. Which you can then save or use whatever way you like. Certainly the most important and the most powerful tool that you have in, um, in Zoom is the screen share tool. This allows you to use your computer as if it were a projector. Uh, only instead of projecting the image up on a wall in your classroom, you'll be projecting it to the screens of all of your attendees. Um, if we click that button, we're given a, uh, an initial screen that allows us to choose what to share and to set some sharing properties. We can share our desktops. I have three on this machine. Normally you'll just see one of these. Or you can share individual applications, application windows, uh, or the Zoom shared whiteboard. You also have the option to share your computer sound, which you'll want to do if you're going to play videos and show movies in class. And if you're going to be doing a lot of that, you may want to optimize your screen sharing for video clips. Though this can have some unintended consequences, so I wouldn't use it unless I felt I really needed it, unless your video is not showing up to your attendees acceptably. Uh, strongly recommend that you share your desktop and not individual applications. That way, anything that appears on your monitor or your primary monitor will be seen by your attendees, and you don't have to wonder what they're seeing. Uh, it can be hard to keep up with what application you are sharing. And then you just click Share, and you'll get a little Share control bar appearing at the top or bottom of your screen. Uh, and from here, you can stop the share you can disable participant annot well let's talk about annotation first you can annotate your screen and and your attendees have access to this tool as well through their view options menu um, you can draw on the screen uh, you can type text You can spotlight your cursor so that people can see what you're doing better with it. Use it as more effective using it as a pointer that way. Uh, and you have some other capabilities here, including clearing all of your drawings quickly. You can even save them. I'll just turn that off. You can disable that for your participants, assuming you've allowed it in the first place. You can disable that. And you can show the names of who's annotating in case you want to catch someone who's misbehaving. Um, and uh, you can adjust your sharing options here as well. 
they share computer sound and optimizing for full screen video. So if somebody claims they or complains that they can't see your video that you're playing, you can go in and turn this on and try again. And when you're done with your screen share and you just want to talk to your participants, you can just stop the share right here. It is, of course, possible to record your Zoom meetings, and indeed, generally, you'll probably want to do that, particularly if you're holding lectures for your students. Um, if Zoom has been so set up, you can record either to your local computer or to the cloud, the Zoom cloud. Uh, we have videos showing you how to accomplish both of these and how to ensure that you have both options. Basically, in order to record to the cloud, you have to have a paid pro account um, or a confer Zoom account uh, paid for through the uh, State Community College Chancellor's Office, in our case. Um, in order to have the option to record to your local computer, you have to set that option in your Zoom settings in a confer Zoom account. If you have a free Zoom account, your only option will be to record to your local computer. Uh, if you record to the Zoom cloud, the recording will automatically be uh, loaded to the Zoom cloud when you're done. And you'll get an email in a few minutes saying that the uh, recording has arrived. And then sometime after that, you'll get a, a, another message saying that the captions have been created. Indeed, you'll get quite decent automatic captions this way. If you record to your local computer, you'll have to manually upload the recording to some video hosting site like YouTube is a, is a very good option. And of course, with YouTube, you'll also get captions within a relatively short period of time. So you can record either way and then make those recordings available to your attendees or other people who might be interested later on on demand by just providing them with the link to those recordings. Uh, it's possible to have someone close caption your meeting in real time by typing what everyone says. That obviously requires quite a typist. <laughs> um, you can create breakout rooms, which are little mini or uh, separate Zoom meetings to which you can assign your participants or allow them to assign themselves so that they can go and work on a, uh, on a group project and then later allow them to come back to the main meeting and report on that. Uh, we have a, a video that shows the breakout room process in action, so I'm not going to try to do that here, but I'll just show you that it is possible to create breakout rooms very quickly. Uh, you can assign part you can pick the number of rooms you want and either have Zoom just divide the people in the uh, meeting randomly into the different rooms or you can manually populate the, uh, the rooms. The More menu is something that's been added relatively recently and it allows you to stream your Zoom meetings live. Uh, these paid Zoom accounts, the Confer Zoom accounts that we have, can accommodate up to 300 fully interactive participants. So. Most, that's more than enough for most meetings or lectures or whatever. But if you're using Zoom to reach a very large and, and uh, uncertain sized audience, and you want to make sure everyone can see and hear your meeting, uh, you can stream these meetings live on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, then any number of people can listen and see. They can't interact with you like they could if they were actual participants in the meeting, but they can see and hear it. So it's more of a broadcast tool, but that can be very useful as well. Also useful for you, though not it doesn't really affect anyone else's view of the meeting, but for you, you uh, can use, and your attendees have this capability for themselves as well, you have this gallery view option in the upper right hand corner. Uh, by default, you're in what's called speaker view, which uh, in which the person who's talking is displayed in most of the video screen here. And then attendees, or some of them at least, are shown in little video thumbnails along the top of the screen. 
in gallery view, everyone is shown equally. It's a Hollywood Squares kind of view. Zoom can handle up to, I think, 49 webcam, small webcam images uh, at this, on a single page at the same time. If you have more attendees than that, you'll get multiple pages of webcam images. And this is an exceptionally um, useful way to uh, gauge the temperature and the, uh, the functionality of your meeting or your lecture. You can sweep the class at a glance as you can in a physical classroom and see how things are going. Uh, you get that nonverbal feedback <laughs> that you miss otherwise in a virtual situation like this. And you can jump back and forth between speaker and gallery view at will. When you're done, the meeting's over. You can go to the end button here and click that. You have an option to end the meeting for everyone or just leave the meeting and leave the meeting going for the other folks. Uh, that is up to you, obviously. There's also an option to give feedback on the meeting. Your attendees will have this as well. And when you're done, just end meeting for all.